And I hope and pray that you are giving that to your children. And if not, you can change that today. You, like the shepherds, can understand that Jesus has come. Advent is about that. That Jesus came to be with his people, to tabernacle amongst them. John would say in John chapter 1 that he came and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. When I was coming up in rural Indiana in the late 70s and early 80s, I was the middle of three sons. We had a large extended family and we all lived within about a three town radius of each other. I knew my family to the third and fourth generation on both sides. I thought that was pretty standard for everyone. I didn't realize until much later that it was not. In my neck of the woods, in rural Midwest America, coming up in the 70s and 80s, Everyone I knew lived like this. So when we met as a family and an extended family at that, at my great grandparents' homestead of about 600 acres every Christmas Eve, and there was over a hundred of our family there, I just thought this was pretty standard fare. I wouldn't learn until years later that this was something to be completely admired. And once it was gone, it would never return. I cannot provide the same experience for my own children, no matter how badly I would like to. So. From my family to yours, I'd like to share just a little bit of my Christmas memories because I know there is some hubbub in the Christian world especially, and especially among Reformed like myself, about the celebration of holidays or holy days, however you consider them. And I'll let you know really early on in this video where I fall. I think Colossians chapter 2 has much to say about this and that it is not our place to judge whether someone celebrates a holy day or a new moon or a sabbath or a festival that jesus christ and his generosity allows for all of these things now you shouldn't get them out of place and you should never forget the reason for these wonderful celebrations but i do think that christian experience and christian liberty allows for both things so as you can tell by my hat and if you could be here in my house and see the decor this family absolutely enjoys christmas the Advent season, and we celebrate it to its fullest. But I want to discuss what I experienced as a kid coming up and share some memories with you and maybe help you experience some memories of your own for this year and coming years in the future. Bear with me a little bit. I've had some seasonal allergy stuff kick up and so my voice is off today and I appreciate your understanding. One of my great memories of really all of the holidays growing up was because my family lived in such a close proximity to each other, there was never really a question of whose family we would see on which days. I knew that every Thanksgiving was going to be with my mom's folks. That's just how it was. I knew that every Christmas Eve was going to be with my dad's parents. And we'd spend the early part of the day with his immediate parents, my grandparents. And then the later part of the evening, we'd go to my great grandparents' homestead and the whole extended family would get together. Of course, this was rural Indiana, so oftentimes there was snow and, you know, bad weather, but that was seasonal. We loved it. And then, of course, Christmas Day was spent at home early, and you'd open all the presents and the stockings and things with your own immediate family, and then we'd go to my mom's folks. I didn't know families fought about these things because it was so ingrained into our family. This is what you did. One of the best memories I have looking back, though, is that extended family time on Christmas Eve out at the homestead with all of the Wing clan. Again, as a kid, I didn't appreciate it. There were way too many old people. The food was kind of gross. It was an old farmhouse over 100 years old, and it was drafty, and there were mice half the time, and it seemed like no one got along. And I didn't see these kids, some of them, like, but once a year, and they were weird, and I'm sure they thought I was weird. But all of that was just youthful in experience. Now at 45, I look back and maybe it's nostalgia speaking, but I'd like to think it's more than that. I have fond memories. My great grandmother and my great grandfather, perfect, they were not, but I loved them dearly. And they would sit in their separate recliners and they would have the family come in and all of the great grandkids would sit at the feet of those two recliners. And out would come the big family Bible. And we would read from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, every year. So, as a nod of the cap to my family, to my great-grandfather, who I totally adored, and other family members that have went on to be with the Lord, I'd like to read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20 for you now. And this is out of the New King James Version. 
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said unto them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Again, as I said, nothing but fond memories when I read that passage. Memories of growing up in a Christian home, memories of growing up in a Christian extended family, that even when I travel back to Indiana now and visit those who still remain, and even those who have gone on, it's in church cemeteries with all my other clansmen. And there's something very comforting about that, that I am the son of great men and women. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of our Christian heritage. And I hope and pray that you are giving that to your children. And if not, you can change that today. You, like the shepherds, can understand that Jesus has come. Advent is about that. That Jesus came to be with his people, to tabernacle amongst them. John would say in John chapter 1 that he came and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of the Father full of grace and truth. It's a truly magical time of the year. I pray that you're celebrating it. Sure, the commercialism has sucked some of it up and we've been enveloped in all of that. The Good Friday, the Cyber Monday, the Spectacular Saturday. There's a ton. But if you can be quiet and you can just turn your eyes back towards that babe in a manger, you too can remember that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as I look forward to the new year, and I look forward to this new venture of civically minded, I think of a different passage that prophesied about this amazing child that would come and save his people. I think about Isaiah chapter nine, and I'll read you a couple verses from that too. It's verses six and seven. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So from that time forward, what time? Well, Advent, my friends. His kingdom was established the very moment he was born in a manger. His observance of all righteousness through his active obedience and his substitutionary atoning death through his passive obedience on the cross would usher in a kingdom that will never, ever, ever end. Psalm 2 would tell us that all earthly rulers and authorities are underneath this kingdom. And if they're wise, they will kiss the sun lest he be angry and they perish in the way. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. May God be with you both now and in the new year. I look forward to what he's going to do in 2024. And I pray that you'll come along with us. If you like what we're doing here, 
maybe hit like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Sure appreciate it. God bless, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year from Civically Minded.